Former President Donald Trump has had his bond payments slashed by an appeals court in New York. He must now pay 175 million US within the next 10 days, down from the 454 million payment that was demanded after the civil fraud allegations brought by Attorney General Letitia James. Trump said he will abide, but not without issuing a few parting words to Judge Arthur Engoren. Thank you very much. Judge Ed Gorin has done a terrible disservice to the state of New York. What he's done is terrible. Business is a flea. You see that? We just released a statement on truth. Business is a flea and crime is flourishing all over the state. Joining me now is our Washington correspondent, Annalise Nelson. Annalise, they're still coming for him. The Democrats are through the courts, pulling out all stops to defeat Donald Trump before the presidential election. And look, this is very much how it's playing into Donald Trump's campaign. He's still pulling ahead in all those key swing states ahead of Joe Biden. And polls consistently show that many of his supporters say that these cases are exactly what's driving them to support Donald Trump. He's had a mm -hmm. boost in those kind of grass level donations. Every time he goes into court, there's a push put through to anyone who follows his campaign to donate, to help him. And, you know, in, in this instance, we're talking about astronomical amounts of money, about half a billion dollars was the original request for this bond payment. <laughs> but if he is successful on appeal, with that bond being held, he does actually earn interest on that. So if he does win, he will be in for a little <laughs> bit of a payday on this money that he gets back. And the other thing coming Trump's way potentially is this floating of uh, Truth Social. He could be making up to a billion dollars in the initial public offering when that goes through. I want to ask you about the border. I know this is an issue that we talk about regularly on this program. It continues to be a mess, that southern border. Have a look at this footage of Texas National Guard being overrun by migrants, mainly military age men, rioting to get across the border in El Paso last week. The footage uh, naturally went viral. And let's have a look at what the response was. The New York Post reporter Jennifer Taya wrote, media now being blocked from the scene where we captured a breach by hundreds of migrants in El Paso yesterday. How do we do our jobs now? So that's a good question, Annalise, because that footage was shocking to see authorities completely lose control and be overrun. Absolutely. I don't think we've seen anything like that in the last few years as the border's es escalated. Jennifer Tay is very good. If anyone's interested in the border, she's absolutely worth a follow. And it's a very legitimate question. Mm -hmm. How do they do their job if they're being blocked? And this also goes into the stoush between how this is being handled between the federal authorities and the state level authorities. We know Texas wants this sorted, but they're very much hampered by what the federal government wants. And that's why we've seen the Supreme Court challenge already and you'll notice uh, as she clarified in that tweet that that sign was put up by the federal authorities and that's very much driven by the department who wants to minimize any kind of interpretation that things aren't going well there but we're talking about 140,000 gotaways over the border which authorities are saying are a huge security risk we don't know who these people are we don't know where they've gone and it only takes one bad actor in amongst that bunch to cause mm. some real chaos potentially and so that's the great fear out of this is that at some point there's going to be some kind of mass incident connected to someone who's walked over the border uh, talking about the border the border czar the happy clappy vice president kamala harris has got herself into a little bit of trouble for being a little too happy and clappy this week she was uh, filmed laughing and clapping along to a protest song without realising the singers were actually protesting her. <laughs> Watch her slowly uh, stop clapping after an aide tells her what they're actually singing. The protesters were chanting, we want to know, Kamala, what did you come here for? We want to know, what do you think of the colony? Long live free Palestine and Haiti too. A uh, little bit embarrassing, but yeah, she's made worse mistakes, uh, Annalise. 
This is the big issue as we're going into this election. Kamala Harris has never done retail politics before. People forget she dropped out in 2020 before she ever really had to press the flesh with anyone in the public. And so this is where she is not in her strength, is being out and about at photo ops like this. And then for that campaign, we didn't really have any once COVID hit. Joe Biden wasn't out there, and so neither was Kamala Harris. This time around, it's not going to be the same. The expectation's going to be there, and the focus is going to be greater. As we look at Joe Biden being the oldest president in history, again, potentially leaving uh, office at the age of 86, this is going to be a live issue, is whether she's ready to step up. And so this is what people are going to be watching closely as these kind of things play out in this election campaign. Oh, she is a liability that they haven't got a better Veep uh, for this race is, is beyond me because she's not only inept, she's unpopular. Uh, it's okay to be one of those things, but to be both <laughs> is a massive liability for the Biden re election. She needs to be more popular uh, than the other campaign. guys. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Just a little bit popular, but you know, there is a Gavin Newsom just floating around and, and as, as terrible as he has been in California, he, he is a much better performer than, than Kamala is. Annalise Nielsen, thank you so much for your time this evening.